All right, guys, so my Patreon supporters keep coming up with really good questions. Um, this, this one comes from John, and this is, what are the differences between the three major military crusading orders of the medieval world? So the Knights Templar, the Knights Hospitaller, and the Teutonic Knights. Let's look first of all at the Hospitallers. Knights Hospitaller were founded the first of these three orders. Arguably, they existed in some way or another even prior to the First Crusade, centered around a hospital that cared for pilgrims in Jerusalem prior to the, the capture of Jerusalem by the, the Christian uh, crusaders of the First Crusade. The Hospitallers um, kind of officially come into existence, uh, I believe the year is 1113, and they are focused initially on medical care, so hence the the word hospital in their in their name. They ran infirmaries, they ran hospitals in which pilgrims, the infirm, uh, the sick of, of every kind, were taken care of. In particular, there was this idea of taking care of pilgrims because pilgrims could frequently get ill on their journeys. The Knights Templar come into existence in 1118, 1119, thereabouts. The Templars are founded initially as a group of armed uh, men dedicated to God who will act as guides and protectors to pilgrims on the way to Jerusalem, on the way to the Holy Sepulchre and other holy sites associated with the Kingdom of Jerusalem. The Templars actually kind of prompted the militarization of the Hospitallers. The Hospitallers started out just as an order of men who took care of uh, the sick in their hospitals, and then they evolved a military function. First of all, as uh, kind of like the Templars, as military escorts for pilgrims, and eventually they themselves became an army. Both the Templars and the Hospitallers end up becoming major military forces in the Kingdom of Jerusalem. They are answerable to the Pope. They are not really under the jurisdiction of the King of Jerusalem. They are kind of independent in that way. However, for the most part, their policies were aligned pretty much right there with uh, the, the, the Latin kings of Jerusalem. There was some disagreement and some divergences here and there, but for the most part, they acted in concert. The Hospitallers continued throughout their career this very important function of running hospitals and infirmaries. And indeed, the Hospitallers had a branch of sisters. So they were not only just monks, but there were also Hospitaller sisters. And they, of course, did what you would expect. They were mainly a nurse-type functionaries. They helped to take care of the sick, of the infirm. The Templars never really developed that sort of dual mission. They pretty much always remained as a military force uh, committed, above all, to fighting the enemies of uh, the Kingdom of Jerusalem, fighting the enemies of Christendom, anywhere they might be. Indeed, there were, there were Knights Templar uh, in highly... Um, who were, who were operating in uh, the Iberian Peninsula as well as in the Holy Land. Uh, they participated in the Crusades there, and so did the Hospitallers. Uh, but just like in the Holy Land, the Hospitallers also maintained their dual role of providing medical care. Now, if we're talking about the Teutonic Knights, the Teutonic Knights were founded much later than these other orders. They were founded uh, in the in the events surrounding the Third Crusade at Accra. And initially, they were kind of right there in the Holy Land alongside the Templars and the Hospitallers, but they very quickly evolved a role which, which caused them to focus on the Baltic frontier. Uh, the Baltic was a main theater of crusading, and the Northern Crusades developed as a front of crusading that was oriented towards conquering 
these pagan occupied territories, quote unquote, and uh, incorporating them into Christendom and converting the local peoples into into uh, Christians, Latin Christians. And so they kind of brought this whole area into the sphere of Latin Christendom. The Teutonic Knights are a Germanic order. They were they were founded originally by a group of German knights. And they kind of maintained this sort of German identity to them throughout their career. And of course, you know, their name, the Teutonic Knights, or the, as they're, that's, that's how, they, how they are known um, uh, to history. That name sort of alludes to that. The Teutonic Knights are probably most famous for their conversion of the Prussian peoples and the Prussian territory into um, well, the conversion of the Prussian peoples to Christians and the conquest of the Prussian territory as a kind of this large crusader state, sort of this monastic run crusader state. Uh, in Christopher Tyreman, I think it was, he described the Teutonic ruled Prussia as probably the truest of all crusader states because it was entirely run and controlled by one of the uh, crusading military orders the Teutonic Knights. The, the Teutonic Knights also had a very close relationship with the Holy Roman Emperor for a lot of their career, especially in the 13th century. Um, we look at Emperor Frederick II. He, the Teutonic Knights almost acted as an arm of his administration in some respects. Um, Hermann von Salza, who was the Grand Master of the Teutonic Knights during uh, Frederick II's reign had a very close relationship uh, with with uh, Emperor Frederick. Uh, was kind of almost part of his his inner circle in a lot of ways, and, and he was he was a part of his inner circle. And um, the Teutonic Knights uh, um, acted in close concert with uh, imperial policy for the most part. The Templars had a similar relationship you might well okay somewhat similar relationship to the the kings of france and to the kings of england uh, not nearly as close but a fairly close association uh, the templars were heavily concentrated in england and france in terms of their their western european holdings and just to clarify the templars while their main battlefront activity was uh, in the holy land in spain they maintain a vast network throughout Western Europe and uh, kind of the centers of their administrative and fundraising activities were probably in France and uh, in England. So the Kings of France, the Capuchin Kings of France had a very close relationship with the Templars. We, we look back through uh, the different Kings of France who went on crusade, Louis the seventh, Philip the second, Louis the ninth, all along the way, the Templars were acting in, in close concert with uh, the French kings and their crusade and plans, but the Templars also had very close relationships with uh, the kings of England. Uh, Richard the Lionheart famously was had a very close relationship with the Templars. The Templars were um, among his, his most prized advisors during the Third Crusade. Indeed, he kind of uh, put the Grand Master of the Templars at that period of time, uh, Robert de Sable, uh, in his position as Grand Master, uh, Robert de Sable had a history uh, of uh, being one, uh, associated with Richard the Lionheart. And uh, other English rulers, uh, Edward I, uh, he, he was closely associated with the Templars during his uh, brief crusade, the Ninth Crusade. Uh, the Templars and the Hospitallers also were highly active in the Iberian Peninsula, but primarily on the two flanking uh, kingdoms, the Kingdom of Portugal and the Kingdom of Aragon. The central kingdom of Castile and Leon had Templars and Hospitallers as well, but they were more... Castile was more focused on its own native... Castilian military orders, which were introduced, like the, the uh, Order of Calatrava, sort of an order of Castilian Leonese warrior monks. But the Templars and the Hospitallers had, had um, kind of favored positions in the Kingdom of Aragon and the Kingdom of Portugal. 
Um, a king like James I of Aragon, for example, uh, was highly um, involved with the Templars and employed Templars in just about everything he did. Another difference with the Teutonic Knights is they kind of had a close association with the Blessed Mother. Um, you know, we look at the Templars, and they're kind of really closely tied to the Holy Sepulchre and, uh, you know, Christ at, at, at Jerusalem is the seat of Christ's holy, pl uh, holy places. Jerusalem, that territory is kind of almost regarded as Christ's uh, feudal holdings in, in some way. Uh, it's the, it's the, it's the Templars were kind of uh, Christ's army. Uh, the Teutonic Knights kind of developed this concept of being uh, the, the Blessed Mother's order. They were her order of warrior monks. In fact, uh, the Baltic region uh, kind of was thought of as sort of Mary's land, Mary's territory. Like this is where the Virgin, this is kind of her, her domain. Um, and the, uh, the idea was that uh, she was going to replace the, the pagan beliefs that were, you know, she, you know, she would rule as queen where once these pagan gods, these false pagan gods who were demons in the eyes of uh, the, Teut the Teutonic Knights had ruled. And so the Teutonic Knights are kind of, closely associated with uh, the Mother of God. I think it's fair to say that the Teutonic Knights are more closely associated with a secular ruler, uh, the Holy Roman Emperor, than the Hospitallers and the Templars ever were. The, the Templars and the Hospitallers um, had close relationship with relationships with uh, various crowned heads of Europe, but uh, nothing like kind of the, um, uh, the, the closeness that the Teutonic Knights had with the Holy Roman Emperor. And, you know, it's to be expected. The Holy Roman Empire was kind of a German thing. The Teutonic Knights were a German order. I think it also might be fair to say that the Templars were the strictest of these three orders. I may be wrong on that. And if anybody out there uh, has evidence to the contrary, then please let me know and I'll gladly uh, admit to my error. However, um, the Templars, for example, would accept uh, men who'd been thrown out of the Teutonic Knights for transgression. Uh, famously, one of the uh, masters of the Teutonic Knights was expelled for uh, financial uh, fraud, and he was uh, accepted into the Templars kind of as a penitential thing. So the idea was that he would uh, be able to do his proper penance with the Templars and because of the strictness of the Templars. So I think the Templars were arguably the strictest of the three. Um, it also might be fair to say that the Templars were a bit more militaristic than the Hospitallers. Uh, the Hospitallers were certainly a very professionalized uh, army, just like the, the Templars. But again, that dual role of the Hospitallers kind of kept their, their soul uh, in, or kept them with one foot in the mili militarized aspect of things and one foot in the uh, charitable aspect of things. Whereas the Templars were really um, geared towards uh, towards the military function of, of the Crusades. So, anyway, just kind of a brief overview there, just off the top of my head, some, some differences between the Templars, the Hospitallers, and the Teutonic Knights. I hope uh, you in, uh, enjoyed this, uh, this discussion, John. And um, if you have not yet, pick up a copy of my novel of the Crusades, Why Does the Heathen Rage? There's a link below. I'll talk to everybody soon. Bye.